This tutorial is all about the properties of metals, about superconductors and about metallic bonding. This saucepan has a steel base. What properties are needed? Well, I guess it needs to be a good conductor of heat and also have a high melting point. This roof is made of copper. What properties would that need? Well, it needs to be malleable because it's been shaped in this curved fashion and it also needs to have a low reactivity with water. Scaffold is made from steel. The properties that it would need would be to be very strong. And this stove is made from cast iron. It's made of cast iron because cast iron has got a very high melting point and it's a good conductor of heat. You may get an exam question where you're given some data about various uh, metals and asked to choose which is the best for the job. In these kind of questions it's always best to justify why you've chosen that particular metal rather than just repeating the information in the table and maybe also why you haven't chosen the other metals. Look at the table, it shows some information about some metals. Aeroplanes are often made from aluminium. Uh, even though it's not very strong, use the information in the table to tell you why. Uh, Aluminium has a low density, so the plane will be lightweight and use less fuel. And there's our answers, low density or lightweight. They never accept the word light because that's the mass of the plane. That depends on how much aluminium goes into making it. Here's another table of information. This time we're shown an electrical wire. Uh, it says that copper is the most suitable metal from the table to make electrical wires and explain why. Well, it's going to be nothing to do with melting point or density uh, or hardness come to that. It's all going to be to do with electrical conductivity. So it has the highest electrical conductivity. This drill bit is used to make holes in metal. Which metal would be the most suitable to make a drill bit? Well, I would guess it would be one that was very hard and also uh, one with a high melting point. And I reckon that chromium is the best out of those. So I'm going to say uh, chromium as it has the uh, highest melting point and is the hardest. Those are the answers. Examiners are told to ignore anything that's irrelevant. For example, if you wrote that the uh, copper was a good conductor, that's no good because it has to be a good electrical conductor uh, on account of there being uh, a heat conductor uh, column in the table as well. So why do metals conduct electricity? Well, uh, metal uh, bonding is shown here on the diagram. What we've got is metal ions uh, that have electrons which are able to move around from atom to atom. We call these free electrons delocalized electrons. So the electrons aren't, this is just the outer electrons mind you, are not associated with individual ions and are able to move between them. They make a sort of a sea of electrons. Now each of these negative electrons is able to attract the positive uh, ions towards them. So taking this electron here, it attracts this positive ion and this positive ion. This electron attracts this positive ion and this positive ion. And so in attracting each of these positive ions towards itself, they are effectively attracting the positive ions towards each other. And this is what holds the metal together. And the attractions are quite strong. Therefore, uh, metallic bonding is strong and metals tend to have uh, high melting and boiling points. It's also worth noting that metals conduct electricity because these delocalized electrons can uh, move easily from iron to iron and carry electricity. So if electrons from a wire arrive from one end, they hop onto uh, a particular iron 
an electron jumps and another electron jumps and another electron jumps until the electrons jump all the way through the metal and out through the other end. So metals are very good conductors of electricity because the delocalized electrons are able to move easily and flow. Here's an exam question. This question is about metals, copper and iron are metals, and metals are good conductors of electricity. Explain how they conduct electricity. Uh, they have delocalized electrons which can move and carry electricity. And Zoe is choosing a metal to make the bottom of a saucepan. Give one property a metal must have uh, to be useful for making the bottom of a saucepan. Uh, I would say a good heat conductor. And for that last question, there are other possible ones such as a high melting point and malleable. Uh, or words to that effect like let's heat through easily. Uh, also doesn't corrode, doesn't rust, doesn't react with water would be relevant properties but anything irrelevant wouldn't be counted. Now we move on to some special kind of metals called superconductors and we're looking at the benefits of superconductors and also some of the drawbacks of these superconductors. These are just facts you have to learn. The benefits being that they've got loss-free power transmission uh, makes them very suitable for carrying electricity over distances. Super fast electronic circuits, so they could well uh, replace electronic circuits in the future. And also powerful electromagnets, they're already used for this job, for example, in MRI machines. Here's some information about superconductors. By all means, stop the uh, slide and have a good read of it. But essentially, a superconductor is an element or an alloy or a compound that will conduct electricity with little or no resistance below a certain critical temperature. And these critical temperatures are actually very low. They're around about uh, minus 150 to minus 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, and therefore, this is one of the issues with superconductors. They only work at very, very low temperatures. But when they are at very low temperatures, they are incredibly good conductors and offer very, very little resistance. Superconductors are used in powerful electromagnets. For example, here there is a maglev train, a magnetic levitation train, uh, and these use a very powerful magnets in order to lift the weight of the train off the track uh, to give it a very um, easy ride. They can travel very, very fast because they're practically frictionless. This MRI machine for taking uh, body scans also uses incredibly powerful electromagnets. Uh, and they have to be cooled to very low temperatures, which is one of the reasons why these machines are so uh, blindingly expensive. This picture of the large Halon Collider uh, in the continent also shows the electromagnets, which are able to accelerate these particles to incredible speeds and keep them in the center of the coil. Um, these are also performed using uh, these superconducting magnets. Some countries are starting to use superconductors in order to transmit electricity over large distances. Uh, these superconducting cables um, going underground from a power station um, save a considerable amount of weight of wire. It says here that 250 pounds of liquid nitrogen cooled superconducting wire is equivalent to replace 9 tonnes of conventional copper wire. Certain superconductors uh, can make incredibly powerful magnets which will levitate. Uh, and here's a picture of a sumo wrestler in Japan who is standing on one magnet, levitating over another. And uh, obviously it's quite powerful magnet or he wouldn't be able to carry his weight. The American military have used electronic bombs in order to detonate above cities and knock out all of the electrical equipment. I think they've used this in some of their warfare abroad in the last 10 years or so. Uh, and these, again, have to use incredibly strong electromagnets uh, in order to create these uh, electromagnetic pulses to knock out all of the electronics in, for example, TV stations. 
So there are many benefits of superconductors, for example, this loss-free power transmission, the super-fast electronic circuits and powerful electromagnets, but the main drawback is that they only work at very, very low temperatures, and really scientists need to now work on developing superconductors that will work at room temperature or something close to it. Here's an example of an exam question. Metals are good conductors of electricity. Some metals are superconductors. Write down one advantage of using superconductors. Uh, we'll say loss-free transmission of electricity. That will do. And uh, superconductors are expensive to make. Write down one disadvantage of superconductors. Uh, they only work at very low temperatures. And both of those come from the specifications, so so long as you keep to the information from the specification and the examples given on that, uh, you really can't go very far wrong.